Hallelujah. Uh, today, I want to talk about a topic. It just came. I got a visitation from the Lord. I was very encouraged. This is the second visitation in a space of about three weeks. So it was quite encouraging. The times he comes to lift me up. He came, it was so personal. It was something that um, changed my understanding of certain things. So today I'm going to take my reading from the book of Jeremiah. My topic is, to whom shall I speak? To whom shall I speak? This is part one. It's going to come with the part two. Before I get into my message, there are two things I want to share. One, let us be ready to hear the gospel. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 1, walk prudently when you go to the house of God and draw near to hear rather to, than to give sacrifice of fools. Then we have demanded Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18. When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same, this, that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require from your hands. That's God speaking to us. So as we minister, we are also washing our hands off the blood of the people who are going to hear the message. That's why I pray that this message that I'm giving others, let it be as real as a life as the word of God itself, because it's a double-edged sword. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15 says, I'm not yet in my message. Be, be said, but sanctify the Lord your God in your heart and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. That means we must be able to ask, to answer questions contain, concerning our gospel. We cannot talk about holiness, holiness. We cannot come and say we condemn people, yet we cannot defend the positions that are in the Bible. So we have got an obligation according to 1 Peter chapter 3.15. Also, we have got an obligation according to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 23, to avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate. Now getting into my message. To whom shall I speak? Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 10. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, that they cannot hearken. Behold, the word, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. We have been hearing the word of God day in, day out. Our days are increasing in ministry and church. But the value, we have no value, which we call the spirit, the fruit of the spirit. That's what we need. The more we talk about it, the more we concentrate ourselves while we are gathered. Otherwise, it becomes a social gathering. We are gathered here preparing for the great God who is coming. To whom shall I speak? Like I said, this is the title of my message. I'm going to say, to whom shall I speak? To those that are perishing. Job chapter 7, verse 9 says, us, As the cloud is consumed and vanished away, so ye that goeth to the grave shall come up no more. To those that are perishing, we are saying, to whom shall I speak? So we are speaking to those that are perishing. If we live foolishly, if we don't take our time to walk, to to take stock of what is happening in our life, oh yes, this verse becomes real for us. Because he said, he that goeth to the grave shall come up no more. Why anybody who goes there will not come again. Job was in distress during that time. He had a huge palace. Now he's saying, if I go to the grave, I'm not going to come. The fireplace where you used to sit with his children coming, dirty, how are you? All those things, it's no more. 
So let us remember to whom is the Lord speaking? He speaking to us. Let us live a holy life. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 22 says the same thing. I have blotted out as a thick cloud, thy transgressions as a cloud, thy sins return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. For, the, for those that are perishing, the Lord is saying, come back to me, for because I have redeemed thee with my precious blood. Your transgressions, your many sins that are reaching up to heaven, God is saying, come back. He says, I take no pleasure in the death of a sinner. So when the door of the Lord is open, his hands that were stretched on the cross like this are still open. There's going to be one flight. That flight is, um, is going to be flown by the Lord himself. Anybody who is not worthy, anybody who is not marked by the Holy Spirit, who, is, who, is, who redeems us for the day on which the Lord comes, then we are going to perish. To whom shall I speak? To those that are perishing. So Lord is saying, come back to me. Even if your sins, <clears throat> your sins are as a thick cloud, I'm, I'm going to take them away because I have redeemed you by my precious blood. In the same job again, he said something, before, before I go, whence I shall not return. Death is one way, even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. Today through entertainment, we are being told we are enjoying. We are going to the land of darkness. We are already in the shadow of death. The moment we go onto the broad road, we are those that are perishing. So the Lord is speaking to us today. To whom shall I speak? God is saying, come back to me. It's a land of darkness. It's darkness itself and there's the shadow of death without any order where the light is as darkness. There is no light at all. God is saying those that are perished, the light that you are seeing here is not light at all. The light that you are seeing, you, the sun is millions of kilometers away. And it bends us. And the sun itself at full strength is half of what the Lord gives. So we can see in terms of light that the sun actually gets its light from the Lord himself. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 9, it says, from hell, from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. We have seen because of the ways that we are living today as Christians. Hell is just removed so that we don't go far we just admit it. The moment you die, you have entered. So you would have died as a foolish person. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. Yet hell will be coming. Remember the book of Revelation on the five seals, the seven seals, where they were talking about, is it the six seals, where they were talking about um, death, death, and Hades. Death claims the body. Hades claims the soul. And they go to hell. These are two twin evils. The one that will be crying, running into the lake of fire in Revelation chapter 2. So he's saying, hell from the need is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stared up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. All those people that you think are great, the moment you die, the devil has no respect. To whom shall I speak? to those that have sinned as a lifestyle. In the book of Ezra, chapter nine, verse six, it says, oh my God, I'm ashamed and bluch to lift up my face to thee, my God, for our iniquities are increased over our head and our trespass is grown up unto the heavens. The Bible is making it very clear. To whom shall I speak? We see here that Ezra is crying out to God, said, I'm ashamed. And here we are 
we are not ashamed of our many sins. We are not living half as holy as the older generation. Yes, we have got too many distractions. We are living in a digital world, but it's a choice. Daniel, Joseph, those young ones, they lived in this kind of times. They did not allow themselves to be distracted. Today, the Lord is calling us. He is speaking unto us. He said something in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 15. He says, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Say, nay, they were not ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among the fallen. Hmm. When the Lord, this is to say, when you have sin as a lifestyle, not only do you commit it, but you also encourage other people so that it becomes acceptable. Pastors are keeping their friend. In the church of God, I saw one movie which was just trying to highlight the dangers in the times that we are living in, where a pastor was encouraging people to say, no, it's okay. Once you do the introductions, it's your wife. The other pastor said, no, suspended them from there. So these are the kinds that makes ministers of God sinners sin as a lifestyle. And what can the righteous do if the foundations be destroyed? These people, these are the people that are general overseers. The glory of God, they have lost 15 churches, 20 churches. But what are they giving? That is the question that begs the answer. The Lord is saying, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? The same thing was repeated, that same question was repeated again in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 12. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. It was repeated for significance. As the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 14, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man. It was repeated again in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. There is a reason when the Bible repeats such verses. Sin is a lifestyle. When we say sin is a lifestyle, we are not yet in our glorified bodies. Apostle John, the one that was lying on the bosom of the Lord, when he was telling them, one of you is going to betray me, is the one that wrote the Revelation, the book of Revelation. When he met the Lord Jesus Christ, he was paralyzed as dead. He said, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The one who was dead and the one who is alive forevermore. This is a person that he knew inside out. He was one of the top three. Him and Peter, always with the Lord. But now he met the Lord not as a savior. He met the Lord as a child. He fell dead. He said, write these things for they are true. If a man who lived with the Lord Jesus Christ, we will say the, the beloved of the Lord Jesus Christ, he loved him so much. This is the man who said something. This is the man before he said, go and strike them with thunder. Anybody does something, say, strike them dead. Strike them dead. But we saw that at the end, he became a minister of holiness and love. So he wrote in the, in the book, first book of John chapter 3, verse 5 to 8. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. The same thing which was said by Apostle Paul in Rome, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, or 21, I think the last verse. He made him who knew no sin to become sin on our behalf. This is what Apostle John is writing here. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. In him is no sin. So whosoever abided in sin, abided in him, sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth, had not seen him, neither known him. So you cannot claim to be a Christian when you are every day, day in, day out, every week, you are doing the same thing. He said, little children, let no man deceive you. He that, that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. 
For this purpose, the sign of God was manifested that he may destroy the works of the devil. When he said, whoever sins, we all sin. And when you say of the devil, every one of us, the devil is a generic name for Satan. Every one of us has been devils at one point or the other. So when people say, I'm not the devil, say, oh, yes, it's just a generic name. It's a name that can apply to anybody. Anybody is not standing right. When you stand right, you become a saint, a child of God. So what the Bible is saying here, whoever sins, he that committed sin, sin is a lifestyle. I preach against drinking beer. Now I sit here, son, give me that bottle of wine. You are living in sin. That is sin as a lifestyle. You cannot forgive. You preach forgiveness. This is the sin that is taking Christians to hell. There was one testimony where I heard one man who had been taken to hell several times. He said the number of women who are in hell. So ask him, say, why? He said, and forgive me. Many have been brought to the point of bitterness. And this is living a careless life. If you go to bed, all the fasting, all the prayers does not count for anything. Your punishment is going to be double. That Bible says, ah, we must forgive 70 times, seven times. Oh, yes. They will be there. Those are sins that no man can approve, but they come in our heart. And they become a lifestyle. Cancel culture, the one that you see in the United States. Anybody who crosses my path, cancel them. That's not a Christian way of doing life. God is calling us today. To whom shall I speak? God is calling us today to live right before him. He is righteous. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. To Father Abraham, say, walk before me and be thou perfect. Walk, he did not say move. Walk before me. Because moving, you can be going anywhere else. But when you walk, it means lock in step. As the book of Amos chapter 3, verse 3 says, can two walk together unless they are agreed? What do we see? People are moving at times together. But walking, it demands that we must be locked in step. When you're walking together, somebody should not be five meters away. No, we are not together. There's a spirit of destruction already. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear, says the Lord. He said their ear is uncircumcised. They cannot listen. They cannot follow. They cannot obey. That's what the Lord is saying. The word of the Lord is a reproach. They have no delight in it. Is this going to be our portion as Christians? We come to Christianity that we don't perish. It is fit. On my WhatsApp profile picture, I put one picture, half of it is my wife, half of it is me. Somebody, somebody saw it. I don't know whether I could not get this my wife or so, he said, ah, that small emoji. He said, ah, I heard you've got a girlfriend. He said, ah, because I was rebuking sexual immorality in his life. Now they thought, I said, oh, I said, I'm sorry that probably the Lord is angry with you that he has removed common sense from you. He cannot even see that it's the same picture that is also on Facebook. I will not come in parade my stupidity before the world. If I were to sin, I will step down. I will not live in the presence of God a different lifestyle. He did not call me to perish at his feet. When I told him, this is my wife, he said, ah, so people were lying. He said, stop saying people. I don't believe in the nonsense where people say, ah, because you're a minister of God, and now we are saying, people are saying, it's absolute rubbish. 
Stop saying people. You are one of the people that are hiding behind a mass of people. I said when sin is sin, rebuke it. We take no apology for mentioning the sins in the Bible. That's what we are being called to do. If we don't preach about it, it means in your place, or I'm accompanying you to your end, where we said once you go there in the book of Job, we are not going to come back again. That means eternity has been has come for you. The book of Isaiah said hell will be brought out of it. So brethren, we have got an open. Whom shall I speak? To Christians celebrating birthdays in church. Pastors, general overseers are celebrating their birthdays in the church. Forcing vulnerable believers in church to make massive contributions to carry favor with the leaders. Now it has become that he has got a birthday. That he has got a birthday. People are even stealing from their families to want to get a good standing to be approved by the servant of God. Like I always say, brethren, I say without regret, listen to me, but don't look up to me. I am not the standard. The standard is the Lord Jesus Christ. If the Lord allows me to fall for any reason, I'm not going to fall with anybody. I will stand on that day in almost every preaching. I said, yes, do not follow me. Listen to me, but look up to the Lord, the author and finisher of our salvation. I did not go to the cross for anybody. I'm only doing my assignment, sharing with the brethren. Don't say, ah, my pastor is the standard. I am not the standard. I am not going to live foolishly in the belief that I have made it already. When on that day, Kami said, no, depart from me. That will not be my portion. That will not be our portion. So pastors, especially general officers, and those in leadership, the first ladies in the church, are forcing believers to celebrate their birthday. Let us cut the cake in the church. I will tell you a brief history. I have mentioned the time without number. The issue of birthdays, there is nothing good about the birthday. Nothing. Nothing at all. We saw the two times that it was celebrated in the Bible. Nothing good came out of it. The birthday came when God promised that he was going to destroy the devil and his cohorts. Satan, Lucifer, and his cohorts. What did, so one of the angels was very much afraid. He said, oh, God is going to destroy. He knew that God, if no word of God comes back empty. The word came. So now he said, God is going to so now each year that God did not destroy them, they started celebrating. Ah, God has given us another opportunity. That's how this kind of celebration, that is birthday came about. If you don't reach your birthday, what are you going to celebrate? Are you celebrating the life that God has given you? Or yeah, if you want to do it in your home, it's okay. But you know, the thing that I'm suggesting is, if it is in your home, it's okay but not in the church, it becomes a distraction. If I tell all of you now my birthday is on this date, everybody says, what can we do for him? We want a surprise. No, it becomes a standard in the ministry. We are not called to celebrate birthdays in the ministry. Mommy has got the birthday. People are making a big take like this. Yet thousands of people are dying out there of hunger and we are celebrating birthday in the church. To whom shall I speak? They have got uncircumcised ears. People are running over, running over each other, trying to please the man of God. Many people think people were calling servants of God called themselves into office. God is saying, sit down and learn. Learn more about him. Then you can come and minister. But he asked the Apostle Peter, you love me. Peter got irritated. He said, what is it? He said, feed my sheep. 
He knew what he was asking, he's saying, feed my sheep. Today, we have got celebrity pastors in church. Pastors where they are coming, it's like a five star just coming, Hollywood, they coming in. People come say, ah, oh, pastor is here like the Lord Jesus Christ, like the Holy Spirit is there. Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your, your servants. No, no servant is celebrated. Do you celebrate your house here? Why are we being celebrated? Even today, people are celebrating politicians. Now they are coming in as, as bosses, yet they are workers of the people. Pastor, general overseer, leaders of ministry, they can, no, they can now not clean the church, evangelize, share food if they've got a function. And say, no, no, this one, let this one do. Are we not called to save? This status that people are giving themselves is what is taking them to hell. There's a lot of worldliness. To whom shall I speak? The pagan traditions which has entered the church. We've talked about better days. I told you the history of better days. They came because one of the angels was afraid. So God did not destroy them. You know, just, oh, ah, God did not destroy us. Because they begin to celebrate after each year. It is nothing to do. There's nothing Christianity there. Nothing Christian at all. If you want to celebrate, I'm saying it's okay. At least I'm getting wiser with age. I bless God. Nothing has happened to me, to my family. They can have something small. Or you can use that opportunity to bless an offering than to say, I want to celebrate. What are you celebrating? Pagan traditions, Halloween, one of them. Pagan traditions of Christianity. We have got pagan traditions in church today which are being celebrated. Christmas. For example, Christmas, New Year, we have got Easter. I'll just tell you a, a, very small, a, a very small thing about it. At one time, I think I preached about it. Christmas, that was the Sartunelia. They were celebrating the sun. That longest day, that 21 December. But they just pushed it. They just married it. Remember, it was a compromise which they did. Christians were being persecuted by one of these, the emperors, Roman emperors, Nero, was the meanest of them all, the cruelest. He was just a typical pharaoh in an Italian body. They will call people, Christians, all them sit in a, in a, in a, um, in a stadium, release those hungry animals, feed on Christians, they were laughing and drinking beers. That's what people are saying. So Christmas, the new year, Saturnalia is a Christmas. They just pushed it to Christmas. New year, that was to honor the true first God. It was it's called Janu. All this month from January, February, March, until about August. Until August, they are all names of God. They are all names of God. There is nothing Christianity about it. In Latin, that's when they said September, seventh month, eighth month, ninth month, tenth month, eleventh, that's why it's called November. All these ones, they became the, the Latin numbers, denoting the number of months. Otherwise, before all of them, they are just um, the names of the gods. So Janu, that is the two first god. It was called Janu. Halloween, Samhain, it, it's called it was called to honor demons. That's what they used to do. That's why they put those useless, um, these devil things. You can see there, if even Christians are part of that stupidity. Christians should have a bit of common sense. I will explain about Halloween. Let me just move in a little bit. Valentine's Day. That was a pagan Roman festival of fertility. How it was started, a chaplain, Oh, I'm not going to, do, to get into the history of um, the Valentine's Day. 
but there's nothing good about it. There's nothing Christian about it. I will tell you the bad thing about the bad side of Valentine's Day. Many women got pregnant, girls. Girls, women, the girl child is always at the receiving end. If she falls pregnant, who is good? The man runs away. He says, I'm in school. Now I cannot do it. You, the parents, are going to look after it now. Because of those ordinary flowers. Because of a dinner. So now we are reducing yourself. Some have lost their woman with their virginity as women. STDs, sexually transmitted in, um, infections. HIV, how many people are getting these diseases over this one single day? Immorality, women, men going to other partners, all in the name of love, seeking validation. There is nothing good about that day. The Christians must not celebrate it. If, if you are a woman, do you need to be celebrated one day in a year? Why can you not be celebrated every day? If it is your routine, you buy flowers after two, three weeks, you buy flowers, then it's okay. If that day is on that Saturday, then it's okay. It has become a form of business through stupidity. The Babylon, Babylonian goddess, Ishtar. Ishtar. I talked about Ishtar. When I talked about Ishtar, when I talked about um, uh, Semiramis, the wife of um, the man who was trying to build the Tower of Babylon, <clears throat> he had the son, Tammuz. When this man died, they took his manhood and they did not see, so he said they disappeared to be with the sun. The sun is in a celestial body. So the woman now claimed that, so because they had a son, he had a son with his mother, Tammuz. That was a very foolish young man who was also, <laughs> he was killed by a wild pig. So what did this Ishtar, there was no, the, she was now, um, this land, is it land? The, Ish, the Ishtar, Ishtar is the one for the, this goddess, the Semira, Semira, Semiramis, the mother of um, Tammuz. So what happened is with this woman, they started celebrating Easter. When you look, is it uh, Luke chapter, sorry, Acts chapter 12, verse 5, when they wanted to kill Peter, they said the people liked it. They said they were afraid they were left to wait. Easter was celebrated 2,000 years before the Lord came. Days, that, that, that thing we say Lent, Lent, 40 days. It was 40 days of weeping for Tammuz, that foolish boy, that foolish boy of um, that when they wanted to, 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 to where the Lord said, let us confuse them with, um, with a new, with different languages. So everything, when you look at them, there is nothing good about it. There is nothing good about it. I'm not going to, it's not part of our things. So I wanted to talk briefly about Halloween. When you see the exaltation of these um, frightening costumes, images, decorations, such as witches, goblins, vampires, devils, Halloween obviously does not exalt the Lord Jesus Christ in any way at all. As a matter of fact, Halloween celebrates the very powers of evil that nailed our Lord Jesus to the cross. So Halloween celebration itself is thoroughly rooted in paganism and the occult. The Bible says, learn not the way of the heaven, for the customs of the people are vain. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2 to 3. Thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9. And the Bible is very clear. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So why is this hard to understand? Why is this hard to understand? To whom shall I speak and give a warning that they may hear? The Lord, remember the Bible said, he who has got an ear, let him hear. There are no shortcuts in Christianity. There is no crown without a cross. 
There is no crown without a cross. If you want the crown, put the cross. Where your character is going to be nailed down. Your character must be nailed down. Praise the Lord. So the doctrines of the devil have been propagated by the unwilling believers to pay the price of following the Lord Jesus Christ. Christians are not ready to pay the price. That's why everywhere where they hear about a testimony, they run foolishly. Man of God, can you tell me what God said? I will not tell you. If I am to tell you it's a sin in your life, that is not confessed. Sin that you've hidden far away from everybody. Sins that you are ready to take to your grave is the sin that I will bring up. I will not come and tell you, the Lord showed me you are buying a car. You think I will come here reading my Bible to come and tell you that you are going to get a car? No, if somebody has got the time to go to the glory. As for me and other fellow minded Christians, we are here to preach the word and get ready for his coming. Get ready that if you go to bed and do not wake up, be ready to meet your, your maker. None of us has been promised tomorrow. Let us not live foolishly because we will die like this. Christians want to have their needs met quickly and easily, which has give, given rise to this fly-by-night clergy bent on milking gullible believers. They come and ask you questions. Now they approach your husband, he's a man of God. You want this is, ah, this is what the Lord showed me. No, no man of God who prays, I've said, I've come and said for a man of God. No man of God, I cannot come and pray to you say, now God is going to heal you. I would not know. God is sovereign. These are sins of presumptuousness. I can only pray according to the will of the Lord. If that is his will, to heal you, you will do it. I cannot come and say, hey, the Lord is going to heal you. Why would I promise as if I'm the one who put the disease in you? If you hear people say, no, it is only God who heals. I cannot come and say, yes. If he chooses to answer the prayer, yes. It depends on my standing. It depends on your standing. It depends on faith. At times, it doesn't need your faith. He just heals you to show his glory. God is sovereign. He can use any one of the factors. So because the people are, people want an easy life. They are being milked dry. And the only thing that these people talk about, can you bless the servant of God, please? They talk about money like you wake in a bank. Like you just go and pick gold, say, take. People are waking their fingers to the bone. You will come. That's what, that's what the Lord told me. Because you want prophecies. Women are the greatest transgressors in this area. 70%, they are all there for prophecy. When they hear the word of God to become true believers, no. What did the Lord say? Go and pray, go on your knees and ask God those questions. Why? There's only one mediator between God and man. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Why should I be your mediator? I will never point you to myself. I will point you to the cross. If you want us to have a prayer of agreement, that's something else. Now we are being lied to, I am praying for you. I never lie to people. If I'm led to pray for you on that day, I will pray for you. People say, ah, oh, pastor, so you don't pray for me. No, I don't pray for you every day. It is easy to remember me because I carry a greater responsibility. In a week, yes, I take different um, turns, praying for different leaders, the different souls in the ministry. I do. But I cannot come and promise you every day. I'll be lying because that's what you want to hear. Let me go to a church where the pastor will be praying for me every day. You think if pastor of stress is going through a lot, you'll be remembering about you? Because that's what you wanted to hear. Say now, can you bless the man of God so that your prayers can be easily answered? I would rather have you stand and root yourself in the word and know 
the way to the cross than for, for you to come to me. You will become my person. I do not want, I did not go to the cross for anybody. It's the Lord Jesus Christ that went to the cross, not me. So if anybody wants something, to whom shall we speak? To the people who want these prophecies too much. To the Christians who are gullible. To the Christians who are naive. The Christians who are not willing to go to the cross. To the Christians who want the crown without the cross. I'm ministering to us today. There is an offer coming to be done. God simply does not work that way. He cannot just wake up and say, ah, I plant a fruit today, the, a, a tree, the fruits we eat. God is not a magician. Believers must learn long suffering and patience. Cannot tell me, ah, that is not fair. Who told you God is fair? God is just. That's why you see, is it uh, Matthew chapter 22, verse 14? The, those, he said those people, many are called few are chosen. He said those Puritans and uh, publicans and prostitutes are going to go ahead of you in the kingdom of God. Why? That's God for you. Those that have rejected the message. Muslims are going to hear this message that we are rejecting today or not accepting. They will hear the message, go in, they will, be, they will enter into the kingdom of God before you. Let your coming into this ministry not be in vain. Let it not be a case because you will receive a double punishment. You cannot tell me you go to a university, prestigious university like Harvard or Oxford or this Ivy League um, universities and still come and tell me, say, ah, I did not do it. If in a person without sense, when they go to Harvard, they will come with a bit of sense. They will come with six senses. So let our coming here not lead us to shortcuts, no shortcuts in the charity. To whom shall I speak? God is ministering to us today. The Bible says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears. One person said, Pastor, I'm not comfortable with your teaching. said, no, I'm not preaching to you for you to be comfortable. Apostle Paul said, if you preach another gospel, if an angel lets you be a case, I'm not going to be a case for anybody. I'm not looking for validation. I'm not in the politically correct class of people. Come and said, yes, I want to be popular. I want to be accepted. No, this gospel was rejected by many. This gospel was rejected by many. So there's no cure all in the Bible. You must use all the provisions of the Bible to lead a balanced life. Like I said, there are no shortcuts to a successful Christian life. There is a price to be paid. We must pay the price. You cannot come and say, ah, God, you know, I should do this. Yes we should be able to pay. Let us go back to the cross. Whom shall I speak to? And give a warning that they may hear. Whoever is hearing the message today, God is ministering unto you. He says your ear is uncircumcised because you cannot hearken. You cannot follow. There is no holiness without obedience of the word. There is no selective cherry picking of scriptures. This one I like, this one I don't. No. Obey all my commandments. With the Lord Jesus Christ, if you do not obey one, he said, depart from me. He rejects everything that you think you are. He is not ready. To whom shall I speak? To those that encourage others to live in sin. Romans chapter 1, verse 25. Apostle Paul said, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and saved the creator more than the creator who is blessed forever. Apostle said, amen. The one when um, Moses was telling them, they said, let the church of God say amen. They say amen, that live forever, Lord Jesus Christ. He said, for this cause, God gave them up vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use 
into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men are, sorry, I'm speaking German, also the men, leaving the natural use of women, bend in their last one towards another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, receiving themselves the recompense of the error. God said because they have darkened their conscience, they have sired their conscience. If God cannot come and destroy this world because of, because of um, homosexuality, lesbianism, when I'm here, I preach, I work with these people. I'm not called as a preacher at work, but here I have taken no apologies. I'm at work, I'm in my office, I preach the word as God said, go and tell the sins. If they ask me what do they do, deliverance, then we deliver them through the scriptures to know where they stand. Something must go in first. We have got these people are being celebrated. So if God cannot destroy these people, this world, he cannot be God. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. You will have to go to hell and apologize for the people that he put in hell. Do you think the whole God is going to do it? What is man that God is mindful of him? That God can go and apologize to a mere human being. The one is just like a flower. Today is here, tomorrow is no more. What is man that God is mindful of? Who can talk back to God when God speaks? He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. The whole city came to men. Before the angels could even confirm, say, hey, this is the rumor which we had, that this city is like this. They said, what? Ah, they came. Just five minutes, hey, there are two men, there are two men. They came in. The time that he was begging them to come, them in, to come into his house, that's when they were gathering together. I don't know whether they were using WhatsApp, Facebook. There are men here, there are men here, we came. They all ran. Now what do we see? A demonic, we have got a demonic government, which are encouraging now, even giving money, the Western, the Westerners. Anybody who wants to be a millionaire, now they are saying, I am a homosexual. I want money. The moment I just say I'm a homosexual, I have millions of dollars. I don't need to go to work for what? changing something that is natural, something that is vile before the Lord. The Romans 1.32 says, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but there's pleasure in them that do them. Now there's a stupidity, rhyme stupidity in the US. They passed the Equality Act, where there's no gender. The bathroom that a lady uses, the same bathroom that I just claim I'm a woman, I use it. Where is the privacy? Where is the privacy? That the girl child cannot go and take shower with another girl because uh, one foolish boy will come in and claim he's a boy. These things are happening before our own very eyes. To whom shall I speak? God is saying, hearken unto my word. We have become too politically correct. What about the homosexual? What about the lesbians? Uh, no, uh, God, no, you will go and burn in hell if you don't repent. That's the only thing that you will die foolishly. Luke chapter 3, verse 18. Likewise, they say, repent or you're going to perish. There's always an alternative to, to, to repentance. If you don't repent, you're going to die in the beginning. There are no two ways about it. We are not, we are not preaching to, to make anybody happy. If it is acceptable, yes, let them accept it there. In my home, they don't come. I don't need any, any one of them there. For what? What? Why would I be entertaining them? To say, therefore, come, sit, make you drink. No. If they want to hear the Bible, yes. I'm not going to be politically correct. Say, yeah, you know, I was just thinking, no, there's nothing to think about, nothing, nothing. Take a stand. I had friends who used to drink beer. 
I'll bring my PSA, not in this house. No, not in this house. It's finished. You want to smoke, sir? Not in this house. Let the rules be very clear. You don't need them now. You don't need them tomorrow. You don't need them next year. You don't need them in the next hundred years. They have made their decision to go and ban. So let, just let them go and ban very well. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? To whom shall I speak and give a warning that they may hear? Whoever is hearing this message, as much as I'm hearing, we're also hearing together. So you and me are going to stand on the judgment day, hearing this message. As you were preaching this message, I asked for grace to, to leave that which I'm preaching. To whom much is given, much is required. So I require greater grace to stand before here. I'm not standing before you as one who is holy. No. I stand as one who has given his heart to the Lord to make me right with him. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times shall, some shall depart from faith, giving heed to seducing spirit doctrines of the devils. To whom shall I speak? To whom shall I speak and give a warning that they may hear? First Timothy chapter four, verse one to three. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, doctrines of the devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats which God did created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. This is a very damning type of verse. They say in the latter days, in the latter times, people shall depart from faith. Now everybody they are going, pastor says, no, you can put on that mini skirt. If it is in your bedroom, I have no problem with that. Oh yes, I will not condemn you. You are in your house. I want you want your husband to see you to God be the glory. That's it. There's no holiness in your bedroom. That I cannot, that I cannot come outside what is the Bible is and come and tell you how to live. No, I can only go as far as the scriptures allow me to interpret them. As far as the Holy Spirit leads me. But it's a using spirit that you can come with a half-naked chest. You come and they want to be in the choir where everybody's seeing them like this. <clears throat> When they start to dance, they go shake their body. People say, ha. They make even the people who are in disco to feel like they are doing, they are not doing anything. Second Timothy chapter three, verse one to five, it says almost the same thing. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves. When you say men, we are not taking men. You and me are men. Just remove them and put yourself there. You and I are male, are female as well. You and I are the sons of God. In the true church of God, there, are, there is no male in the true sense of the Lord, the Bible. Because you and me, you and you and I, we are the bride of Christ. So we cannot boss say, ah, woman, woman, this it's nothing like that. That is the a, a, a chauvinistic attitude coming from men to define the women as objects for pleasure. For men shall be lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Everything you see that the things that we're talking about, departing from faith, to whom shall I speak and hear the good word? Departing from faith. Now it doesn't matter. Pastor, what pastor tells you? Pastor tells you you are born again. Huh? Pastor, pastor is not the standard. When you hear any servant of God that you hear who is telling you that is the standard, tell them they are coming from the pit of hell. No man is the standard in the church of God. No matter how powerful they look, 
when many of them could be living in sin, you will see on that day, nothing that was done in private, everything that I'm doing will come out. You will see all those things on that day. No person will, will say, ah, I, 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 I don't know why this one, my general overseer, I don't know why this, our bishop was taken to hell. Oh, oh, I tell you, remember time, there's time is in our realm. Yeah, there's no time. You just live like this, everything says, oh, now I see, depart to the lake of fire. On that day, no man is going to say I was punished and wrongly. Oh, yes. It's not our jail where a person like accused, uh, like Joseph, three years in jail. Say a woman wanted to rape me, if she wanted to rape me. No, this is a holy judge. The one whose eyes are going to, for, to and from, from the earth. Angels are recording these messages, we know. They are going to give this message to the Lord. This is what he was preaching. This is what he was saying. Now say, does he do those things? For men shall be lovers of self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, false accusers, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of men, having, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, say, Turn away from such. Turn away from such people. So we thank God though, when they want something, they say, ah, they just mentioned God so that they've got a semblance of faith. People are living in a, in a, a, a satanic way of life. Departing from faith. To whom shall I speak and hear? Whom shall I speak and give a warning? The Lord Jesus Christ said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Beware of the leaven. This is what has come now. If this is the doctrine of the devils, once saved, forever saved. You are coming in. Adam and Eve tried to do their sorrow. Adam lived in that garden for 30 years. His wife came in for three years and came the fall. So Adam was in the garden 33 years. So the pastors, they said, yes, I know what I'm telling you is right. I know it's right. I've never departed from it. I've repeated in almost every preaching and I'll tell you it's right. So now he's saying, take heed and beware of this level of Pharisees. Once saved, forever saved. Adam thought when he was living in the garden, everything was okay. If Adam had eaten from that tree of life, he could have been living, but in sin, just imagine how many sins would have been here today. But I don't know, he just took things for granted and we thank God for the wisdom that he did not eat. Otherwise, they will still believe in faith. Matthew chapter 16, verse 11 and 12. How is it that you do not understand that I speak it not to you concerning bread, that you should beware of the living of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then they understood they, how they he bade them not to beware of the living of the bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees, their doctrine. I am your father, come. When the Lord Jesus Christ was rebuking the people to say, Father, he was not saying, don't go to your father and say, ah, brother, John, good evening. If he give you a hiding, I will support him. The people he was saying, say that, you see, because he, sit in, he stands in the corner of his street, say, ah, my son. Even a 23-year-old man now is saying a 60-year-old man, my son. But where is culture, where is respect? Where is respect? You come and say, my son is six year old. I met one young man, 23, 24. Say, sir, what do you submit to say? What do you mean? They say, who is your father? 
I say it's the Lord Jesus Christ. He told me, say, I have been your father. I was not given a father by anybody. He gave me peers. He gave me people that can help you from time to time. I was not given a spiritual father. I was not given that vocabulary. If you want anything, come to me. He called me son. I have always been your father. That's what the Lord personally told me. I have always been your father. There are people who are, they are my spiritual son. You met me even as a pastor, now I'm your son. What do you want to teach me now? That you don't preach holiness is now you call you want to call me son. This is the kind of foolishness where everybody just coming in, heaping people towards themselves. Now come my daughter. If I come like this, I can raise 2,000 next week. Which daughter can be disobedient to their father? I don't want to put you in an awkward position where I come and use a title that you are forced. You cannot rebel against your father. Are you going to do it? No. Many of them have even taken the place of the biological father. They are wallowing in poverty. They cannot send them an old man 50. Say, yeah, just send them $50. What do they need money for in Africa? Who needs more money? The one in Africa or the one in Africa? Anywhere else? They teach you to hate your parents. If they are not in Christ, they, don't, they are no longer your relatives. This pastor saw you as an old person. When they born you, when they sold their cows, when they sold their properties to send you to school, you was not there. Now you are coming in and you foolishly come and say, ah, what can I do? That's what the man of God said. Nonsense. When you see such a, depart, run away from such kind of foolish, foolish people. The Lord said, who aren't you scribes and Pharisees? Hypocrites. You pay tithe of mint and you know, they committed, uh, they omitted the heavier, the heavier uh, matters of, of law and judgment and mercy and left, they, they concentrated on things that are not important, better days. Ah, there's a celebration. Ah, uh, brother, so and so is got a better day. This is not in there. Wait a matters where we are preparing people to be holy and get trained for rapture. No. A woe unto you. But a contrast between the bread of life and the living of the Sadducees. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the bread of life. Look at the Sadducees, the, these Sadducees and Pharisees. They point you to the new cross. Where the devil carries the cross. You give him his soul, you go there. Whether you agree with the devil or not, he just takes you. To whom shall I speak and give a warning? Second Thessalonians. He said, I will just read the part three. Second Thessalonians uh, chapter two, verse three. He said, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except the falling away. First, then that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The son of perdition must be revealed. The son of perdition. He is going to come with the lying signs, signs and wonders because the people want, they, they really want these quick, quick things. You want money, just take your money like this. You can be giving demonic money for your soul. To whom shall I speak and give a warning? To whom shall I speak and give a warning that they may hear? Second Timothy chapter one, verse eight. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Do not be ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ. To whom shall I speak and give a warning? The Lord Jesus Christ was speaking to his disciples to, 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 when he was speaking to a uh, gathering. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him shall also the Son of Man be ashamed. I chose the mark part of it because when you look at the other Bible version, they did not say this adulterous and sinful generation. He just said, whoever is ashamed of me, I will not also, I will be ashamed of him before my, my angels, the holy angels and my father. 
But this one brings that ugliness, this adulterous and sinful generation. To whom shall I speak and give warning? Apostle Paul said something in Romans chapter 16, verse 17 to 18. He said, I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. They are now coming in, putting on makeup, it's okay in the church, causing divisions. They come in, putting on ministers. Pastor cannot rebuke them now. Say, ha, sister, she's new. Let them take him by the path. Come and take half of yourself. We don't want to see your nakedness. Spiritually, you're naked. Physically, you want to be naked again. No. We are not going to allow you to be the conduit through men are going to follow in this church. If you are a man, you come this, come for yourself. Chase them out. You have five, ten people who are committed to the work of God. When you chase them, the next week they come dressed well. That's the nature of people for you. For they that are such save not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, they deceive the hearts of the simple. The word simple in the Bible means foolishness. That's a polite way of calling people who are mm, foolish. People who do not, people are not wise in the Bible. They, the Bible, um, King Solomon used to call them simple. When the Bible says simple, it just means stupid. That's what it is. You have no fellowship with unfruitful works of that. But reprove them. You see them emphasizing, I became unpopular in the church where I was. Why I became unpopular? Because people were coming in concentrating on food. I said, children that go to kindergarten, do they eat every hour? I said no. Why should they be eating in church? A two-hour service. They are coming home, 10 o'clock starts the church. Why can they not eat in the three hours before they come to church? They live five minutes away from the church. Why can they not eat? Jettening the church in public everywhere, they finish, they go. These are not babies, babies. No, these are babies that are six, seven years. I said, no, no, no. This cannot be. To whom shall I speak and give a warning? Managing in marriage. Those that are managing in marriage. To those that are managing in marriage. To whom shall I speak and give a warning to those that are managing and enduring in marriage? Marriage is meant to be enjoyed, not endured or managed. Couples who want to express their love for each other and their faith often tend to the Bible about marriage when planning their nuptials. For, conservative plan for conservatives, planning for a wedding whose values are firmly grounded in their faith, it is also about planning for a lifetime worship and spiritual devotion in a life together. So a wedding that incorporates these Bible verses for a man shall need this, that we put, we, some of us went through those things. It helps a couple to remember that marriage is not a contract, but a covenant. Once God is involved in that marriage, once you invite God to come and be part of it, you are not going to end it. Only he can end it. That means marriage must be cherished enjoyed and held in very high esteem, not managed or endured. No. Step up to the plate, be the home builders, be the providers, be the priests in the house. Christians rank among the worst in this area. People are managing, people putting on faces like this, living a deceitful life. All liars, the Bible is very clear. All liars. Revelation 21, lack of fire. Malachi chapter 2, verse 14 to 16, I'm rounding up. Yet, yes, say, wherefore, because the Lord had the witness, had been the witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou, thou hast dealt treacherously, yet she is thy companion, the wife of thy covenant. So marriage is not a contract. It's a covenant. The Bible is very, very clear. It is very clear. So we are not going to be managing. We are going to live the, the way the, the Lord wants us to live. 
Songs of Solomon. Songs of Sol Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6 and 7. Set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm, for love is as strong as death, jealousy is cruel as the grave, because, because thereof are the cause of fire. This is love being talked about in the Bible. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it will utterly be consumed in ecstasy, heaven on earth. The Bible says in um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2 to 3, with all humility, I'm just paraphrasing, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit. Remember, I said those nuptials that we put, you are just committing yourself in faith, devotion, that will be together before the Lord. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9, he said two are better than one because they have got a good return for their labor. If either one of them falls down, one can help the other. Pity anyone who falls and there's no one to help them up. Also, if two lie together, they will keep warm. How can one person keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A court of three stands is not quickly broken. This is where the Lord Jesus Christ comes in the marriage. He is the third strand. Two plus one, the Lord Jesus Christ comes. Therefore, what God has joined, let no man speak asunder. To whom shall I speak? And give a warning that they may hear. Lying ministers, I'm rounding up. Lying ministers. That say the Lord concerning the prophet, that make my people err that bite with their teeth, cry, peace, that he put it not in their mouth, they even prepare for war against him. These are the people that are called to be servants of God. What do they do? They lie through their lips, through their teeth. They speak for God who have not spoken. I'll give these three Bible verses and round up. Okay, well, chapter three, verse nine says, and mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel, for you shall know that I am God. You are not going to enter into the kingdom of God. That said the Lord when God is fired. The Lord said again in Jeremiah chapter 14, 14. Then the Lord said unto me, Prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them, they prophesy unto you false vision and the definition, a thing of not the deceit of the heart. Remember the Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5, that's where it said, Who can understand the heart? The heart is desperately weak. People are going to lie in ministers because you want to hear certain gospel that you want. I tell you one thing, brethren, with all love, humility, stop following men. If I stop preaching this message of holiness, run away for your dear life. Run away. No compromise. No compromise at all. Where people err, correction must be given. We have no political correctness. If somebody does something that deserves to be punished, to God be the glory, that must be done to serve as a deterrent to others who may fall into the same trap. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which is purchased with his own blood. For I know that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. These are pastors now being talk talked about. That was written um, in Acts chapter 20. Say, so be very careful about the people. They will come. The same people that they are meant to protect is the people that are busy eating, tending to hell. This is the part one. By the grace of God, we'll proceed to part two next week. I hand over.